Sasuke is the most dynamic character in Naruto. You may argue that someone like Obito went through more extreme changes, but with Sasuke we saw these changes more, far more often since he was present the entire series. With almost every arc that passed, we saw noticeable to significant changes in his character. This is something no other character can really claim. Even Naruto only had subtle changes from arc to arc and were never as dramatic as Sasuke's. This video is a tribute to that and I'll talk about each version of Sasuke in depth and rank them based on how well written of a character they are. Many aspects determine this, such as personality, ambitions, conflicts, fights, appearance, etc. Not all versions of Sasuke are equal and the best ones are far better than the worst ones. I'll be starting this list from worst to best, so let's go ahead and start from the bottom. Now Sasuke, the rest is up to you. Yeah, alright. But before that, I'm executing the current five Kage. At number five, I have War Arc Sasuke. This version of Sasuke has a lot of his own changes, but the conflict stays the same. He wants to avenge his brother and make sure he didn't die for nothing. When he first awakens the Eternal Manga kills Sharingan, he's still set on destroying the Leaf Village. This isn't an interesting ambition since the war is more and more important, and it doesn't last long. Once he sees Itachi, he drops everything and goes to fight Kabuto alongside him. This fight is not bad, and Itachi's final moments are one of the best scenes in Naruto. It's such a powerful moment that immediately afterwards, Sasuke questions everything he, he ever knew. He doesn't even know what a shinobi, clan, or village really is at this point. Even though Itachi shares some of the blame for turning Sasuke against the village, he ends up steering Sasuke back towards the right path with his final actions. After Sasuke talks to the dead Okages, we see he has decided to protect the village instead of destroy it. Although throughout the war we see him hint at having a different vision for protecting the village than everyone else. This is relevant until Kaguya shows up. This conflict gets swept under the rug by her until she is sealed and Hagoromo asks Sasuke to end the infinite dream. At this point we finally see Sasuke show what his vision of the world is, and it's very interesting and unique. With no tailed bees to world leaders, Sasuke could enforce world peace on his own, even if everyone would hate him. Sasuke hadn't seen the world like Naruto, and really has no reason to believe that the world will remain peaceful after the war. Of course, it is good to see after his final fight that he understands why Naruto is his friend, and that he can put trust in Naruto's visions for the future. This all ends with Sasuke finally doing what was best for him all along, showing respect to Kakashi, showing affection to Sakura, and getting along with Naruto. This is a great character, but for Sasuke's standards, not really. He's too overpowered like everyone else in the series at this point. The fights aren't that good either, and neither is the narrative. His final fight really makes up for this though. The final Naruto vs Sasuke fight is one of the best in the series narratively and just fighting wise. As for his ambitions and conflicts, they're subpar for Sasuke standards. His perspective on the Okage is unique, but this is not as enticing as his past ambitions. I also am not a fan of when he wanted to destroy the village before and immediately after fighting Kabuto. That ambition works better for Kage Summit Sasuke. Overall, this version of Sasuke doesn't compete with past versions of himself. This is a reflection of the Warwick also not being up to par. He does finish strong with a great final fight, and a good final change of character though. What the heck do you know about it? It's not like you ever had a family in the first place! You were on your own right from the beginning! At number 4, I have late part 1 Sasuke. This version of Sasuke centers around whether or not he should fully give into his dark side. Sasuke awakens after a sequence of unfortunate events that have pushed him to a breaking point. He always compared those around him to himself in order to gain his strength. Seeing Sasuke defeat Gaara has made him feel he needs to do something in order to continue progressing in strength. And of course, his encounter with Itachi just reopened his old wounds while Naruto's the salt poured on them. In fact, when he wakes up, he's so abrasive that he says he didn't want Tsunade to heal him and that she was just butting into his business. He continues to lash out at Naruto until their short fight, and is satisfied when at first his Shidori appears to be stronger than Naruto's. Eventually he does see how Naruto's actually did more damage to his water tank. This doesn't actually imply Naruto is stronger though. We know that the Rasengan makes water move, and certainly much more than lightning style. When Naruto was learning the Rasengan, he first started with making water balloons pop from his rudimentary Rasengan. Sasuke doesn't know any of this, and it just makes him brood even more. Kakashi is able to bring him away from the dark side some, but the sound for is the final influence that makes Sasuke go off the deep end. Kakashi could calm him down countless times, but it only takes Sasuke fully committing to Orochimaru once for him to go too far. These influences had been pushing Sasuke back and forth for a long time, but finally his dark side won. 
Even though he gives into his curse of hatred, he still thanks Sakura before knocking her out. This whole conversation really shows that Sasuke doesn't like the path he's taking, but it's necessary for him to complete his destiny. He's still a complex character even when he seems completely dark. A small light still shines within him at this point. At the final valley, he treats Naruto different than Sakura. He joyfully walks down this path now and is giddy to kill Naruto. The only thing that changed between his confrontation with Sakura and his confrontation with Naruto is that he upgraded his curse mark. Just like when he first activated it, he acts different as if it's corrupted his mind by preying on his darkness. It took Sakura pleading to return him to normal because even when it doesn't seem like it, there is still good in him at that point. Even though the curse mark has made Sasuke evil, Naruto's pleading this time around snaps Sasuke back into reality. He even selflessly puts on his headband for Naruto. This is because he's returned back to the Sasuke that last interacted with Sakura. After defeating Naruto, he's given the opportunity to kill Naruto and awaken the Mangekyo Sharingan, but he doesn't. He's always struggled with the idea of doing immoral actions, if it means gaining strength, but in this moment, he finally finds his solution. While he acknowledges that he must kill Itachi, he finally decides that he will decide what is going too far. His father used to tell him to be like Itachi, but before his death, Fugaku told Sasuke to not follow Itachi's path. Sasuke thinks Itachi killed his best friend to obtain this power, but Sasuke doesn't like those means. He decides he's going to use his own moral means to gain power, and this mindset is very present in Sasuke's actions while in Heavy. This version of Sasuke is not as good as his earlier version in Part 1, but I still greatly appreciate him. He uses a bridge between early Part 1 and Heavy, and one that improves the both of them. I think that Sasuke leaving the village is one of the best moments in the plot. Some people may not like that he left, but it would be far worse if he didn't. If Naruto brought him back, it would have lowered the significance and tenseness of this arc. It also was necessary to create a crossroads for Sasuke's internal conflicts in early part 1. What we end up with is a result that greatly shakes up the plot and a new Sasuke. Constant change is something that makes this character so great. This version of Sasuke might be the most necessary version of him, aside from maybe Taka Sasuke. In a way that makes him the best, but judging each version by themselves says otherwise. I'm not a fan of Sasuke under the Curse Mark's influence, and I also prefer early Part 1 Sasuke's inner turmoil compared to late Part 1. His personality is also less present than earlier on, because he's beginning to really focus on his ambitions. Though this version of Sasuke does participate in one of the best arcs, and arguably the best fight in the series. I also like this version's abilities, since he's got a diverse arsenal, and the Curse Mark under control is also pretty good. He may not be the best, but there's still much love about this version of Sasuke. This was a necessary change for him, and he is a bridge that makes early part one and heavy Sasuke better. I can never forgive those eyes that just ignore my yard! I couldn't care less about all of that. I just want you to tell me where I can find Itachi. At number three, I have heavy Sasuke. This version of Sasuke centers around fulfilling his dream of killing Itachi. This desire has consumed him so much that it's really suppressed his personality. Compared to early Part 1 Sasuke, this version's personality is completely absent when he's focused on the task at hand. Even Warwick Sasuke smiled when he was fighting Obuzo, and early Part 1 Sasuke would show his thoughts and emotions during fighting. Instead, this version is beyond stoic when he's working towards finding Itachi. This is his true face, but when we first see this version, he acts tough to fool Orochimaru. He knows Orochimaru likes when Sasuke is ruthless, and Sasuke is trying to make him believe that he'll let Orochimaru take his body. He also hides his true face when Team 7 confronts him. He doesn't want the Leaf chasing him once he starts pursuing Itachi, so he tries to discourage them. He tries to explain his motives, and once it's shown Naruto won't listen, Sasuke engages them. He tries to discourage Naruto by telling him to try to be Okage instead of looking for him. When he draws his sword, he gives ample time to stop him because he doesn't actually want to kill them. He just wants to gauge his own power and show them that he is out of their league which he does until he his mercy allows them to begin to stand strong against him. At this point, he really just wants the fight to end, so he acts like he's going to use Kirin in order for Orochimaru to intervene. This is, this is his exit strategy, and this arc shows how well Sasuke can fool those around him. Once he comes after Orochimaru, we get to see the real version of him. He shows a strong sense of justice, and even compares Orochimaru's motives to Itachi's. After killing him, we get to see him round up heavy, and this is a fun moment in the series. Sasuke will rarely line up during this, and it shows how much more he's closed up since early part 1. The biggest moment we get to see his personality was at the end of his fight with Deidara. He has a genuine conversation about their fight and his strategy, even though Deidara is not amused. I think Sasuke really just liked having a strong opponent and wanted, to, wanted it as a learning experience. It's kind of odd how he's so satisfied here. This is up there with Sasuke entering the Kage Summit in terms of Sasuke overdoing it. 
He was forced to fight Daedra, yet at the end he completely underestimates him. Once they're done talking, he goes back to being stoic, and this is a dense moment for Sasuke. He's so focused on fighting Itachi, he dismisses Daedra's unstableness so hard that Daedra actually rage quits life. If it wasn't for the best plot armor in the series, Sasuke's hyper focus on finding Itachi would have ironically ruined his goal. As for his fight with Itachi, we see his emotions get charged up for obvious reasons, but his personality is still hidden since he's so enraged. On paper, this version of Sasuke's personality isn't even that good compared to others. He comes off as bland and one-dimensional, but really he's not. There's a lot left to interpretation during some of these stoic moments, and this is unique to this version of him. Some of these stoic moments are unlikable, but I really do enjoy this version's personality. Unlike other versions, he lacks any internal conflict, and this contributes to why his emotions and personality is so hidden. This is a good change of pace though, and I like seeing what he's like when he's made up his mind. This version is great in every other aspect. He exists during one of the best points in the series. His Orochimaru fight is disappointing, and I wish there was more to that fight. His Daedra fight is great superficially, but there's no emotion in it, and its ending is terrible. And of course, his fight with Itachi is arguably the best fight in the series. His abilities are well-balanced, versatile, and more unique than other versions. I enjoy his pursuit of Itachi, and finally fighting him is one of the most satisfying and hyped moments in the series. This version of Sasuke has a few flaws, but he has many strengths, with some being amazing. This version is very unique and interesting. At number 2 I have Taka Sasuke. This version of Sasuke centers around his tragic fate driving him into his insanity. With this version of Sasuke it's important to address the people that think Sasuke is being a wimp here. It's really belittling to complain about this version. He had lived most of his life solely dedicated to killing Itachi, and once this happened his whole worldview was flipped upside down. It's really just hard for me to even describe how messed up Sasuke's fate is, especially when Itachi died at his feet. And also, it'd be really boring if after learning the truth, Sasuke just decided to protect the leaf. We've already seen what that was like, and I prefer seeing a new Sasuke instead. This version shows us how much we should appreciate Sasuke's dynamic changes, even when they don't make him a better person. After Itachi dies, Sasuke looks purposeless. He had given up almost everything else in life in order to kill him, and now he's left with nothing. Once Obito starts telling the truth, Sasuke is hostile, but after accepting it, he acts normal. It's almost like it hasn't hit him yet, as he does act very normal before the Kage summit. He says that he wants to only kill the elders, which is similar to heavy Sasuke only wanting to kill Itachi. He has no problem killing B in order to obtain a tailed beast, which is his first inconsistency. While fighting B, Sasuke is as concerned with his peers as when he was in early part 1. He gets very concerned with their well-being throughout the fight, and even thanks Karin for healing him. It's almost a return to form to early part 1, but this ends after he captures B. While delivering B to Obito, Sasuke begins to seem crazy. He starts talking about destroying the entire leaf and goes on one of his rants. This is a sharp contrast from just earlier that day. Sasuke has always had a clear direction, but here it's just random. I chalk this up to him being unstable, and this unstableness would gradually consume him. When Obito tells him that Danzo is at the Five Kage summit, he says that he must kill the Five Kage and doesn't even give a reason. Yet when at the Five Kage summit, his plan was to tail Danzo out of the meeting when he's away from the Five Kage. These inconsistencies pile up and it's because he's just crazy. His typical recklessness also reaches its peak when he decides to show up in front of three Kage exhausted and expect to win. He does get bailed out and ends up fighting Danzo. He does ruthlessly disregard Karin as a hostage, and this scene is perfect for this version. When he reunites with Team 7, his insanity peaks, and it really just shows that he's just trying to kill everything at this point. This version started out having a return to his original self, and ended with him being the furthest away from that. Taka Sasuke really does have a lot of range to his character. This character honestly has everything. At first his personality is close to how great it once was, and in the end he was just purely mad. I love this change. This is because this is how he should be reacting. He has no regard for what he does anymore because of this cursed fate. His ambitions and conflicts are fantastic as well. He had been focused on Itachi forever, and now the plot is greatly refreshed with Sasuke truly giving into his hatred. This makes his actions unpredictable and exciting. It's all just a perfect storm. I also enjoy the Mangekyo abilities, though Itachi did steal a little bit of his thunder by using them first. His fight with B and A are good, and his fight with Danzo is terrific. 
The Kage Summit arc is also great in my opinion. I really just like seeing Sasuke crazy. It's a different type of evil from late part 1 Sasuke. That version was acting like Orochimaru, while this version is acting crazy out of compassion. He loves Itachi and his clan so much that their tragic fate is just too much for him to bear. Sasuke shows us how the, thin the line between love and hate is. Taga Sasuke is unique in a great way, and what's going on with the plot with this version is just amazing. There's nothing I would change about this version. I can... hold him here... a little longer. I lost everything once. I don't ever want to have to see that again. At number one, I have early part one Sasuke. This version of Sasuke centers around balancing his determination to defeat Itachi and keeping his will of fire lit. Sasuke first starts out as a rather watered down version of himself versus what we're used to. Originally, he's way too cool and far too focused on improving his skills. It's great in moments such as his introduction to Kakashi where he explains that he's an Avenger, but sometimes this aspect of him is overdone. Such as when Sakura tells him to quit the bell test and Sasuke responds by saying he can't because he has to kill his brother. I used to not like Sasuke in the Land of Waves arc, but now I appreciate him much more. Very gradually over the arc, his coolness tones down and so does his focus on Itachi. I think these unlikable traits early on are actually positive since he eventually grows into a much deeper and complex character. This gradual improvement climaxes when Sasuke tries to sacrifice his life for Naruto's. He subconsciously has the will of fire, but on the surface all he can manage to say is that Naruto is a pain and that he wished he could have lived longer to avenge his clan. In the end, he seems content with his decision, despite his words conflicting with that. This moment shows that we're dealing with a very complex and somewhat mysterious character. Moving on to the tuning exam, Sasuke has a similar moment against Orochimaru. With Orochimaru threatening Team 7, Sasuke has to consciously choose the Will of Fire over his curse of hatred this time around. He does, but it's a contradictory mindset yet again. He begins to say that it is foolish to solely dedicate his life to vengeance, then he thinks of Naruto and Sakura, but he ends this thought by saying he can't defeat Itachi if he can't defeat Orochimaru. His will of fire is improved, but he still has a very flawed train of thought. This dogma of his is very sensitive to the world around him, and we really see this when he awakens this curse mark. At first, he says that no matter the means, he must acquire power, and even is sadistic with his opponents until Sakura pleads for its end. This deactivates the curse mark and suggests that his comrades do combat his darkness. Orochimaru says that he'll eventually give into that darkness, but that's Orochimaru's arrogance. This Sasuke is a product of his environment, and at this point could, he could really go either way. Eventually though, the circumstances are likely to favor his dark side, since he only has to turn there once in order to enter a place of no return. And of course this does happen, but Sasuke was in good standing at this point. When he fights Gara in the forest, he doesn't flee like he wanted to against Orochimaru. He wants to save his village from its intruders, and pushes himself to the limits to do so. Even when he is too exhausted to defeat Gara, he suggests sacrificing himself for Naruto and Sakura. His reasoning was that he didn't want to lose his comrades a second time. This is the first and last time he consciously and subconsciously chooses the will of fire over his curse of hatred. This time with no conflictions or regrets, he is ready to give up on revenge. This is a high moment for Sasuke's character, and in this moment he is a hero instead of an anti-hero. It is a short-lived moment though, as once Naruto summons 2,000 Shadow Clones, Sasuke's dark side begins a sustained ascent. Seeing Naruto come into his own puts Sasuke back on the wrong track. It's natural for an Indra incarnate when outdone by the Asura incarnate to get fired up, but for this incarnation it's different. Sasuke is constantly evaluating everyone's strength to evaluate his own. He was very curious to see how strong Kakashi was in order to gauge how strong Jonin was. During the tuning exams, he went out of his way to check out the other Genin and added them to a list of people he wanted to fight in order to test his abilities. This included Lee, who after embarrassed Sasuke, originally had Sasuke seething with anger. Naruto cluelessly thinks this is because Sasuke is embarrassed, but really Sasuke is thinking that he's not progressing fast enough to kill Itachi. This toxic mindset remains even when he chooses his comrades over revenge. That along with Naruto being an Osra incarnate is enough to push Sasuke in the wrong direction. We've seen Sasuke go back and forth between line and dark, but like I said, he only has to completely go dark once to seek Orochimaru. His circumstances affect his internal turmoil, and Itachi coming back to the Lee Village is what dooms Sasuke. Sasuke's winding path leads up to this fight, and Itachi just annihilates all the progress he made. Sasuke is dumbfounded as to how he's still so much weaker, and question what he's even been doing this entire time. To stop all of that, he has to relive the massacre for 24 hours straight, 
and the trauma is so great that he enters a coma that only the greatest medical specialist of all time could bring him out of. Sasuke slipping into his coma is the end of this version of him. I think this version of Sasuke is easily the best. Even if he's a little too extreme at first, it actually ends up making the development of his character better. His abilities are underwhelming at first, but with time they become more interesting. He also has a good fight against Orochimaru and Gaara. His highly sensitive inner conflict between his curse of hatred and will of fire is perfect. His personality is also more likable than any of his other versions. As he grows older, his trauma makes him focus more on himself and his ambitions. With this version of Sasuke, we, we get to see him relax some, and there are many small positive interactions that are nice to see. The tuning exams arc is debatably the best arc, and Sasuke is one of the reasons why. The Land of Waves arc and Itachi Infiltration arc are more around average, give or take. Still, this version of Sasuke is almost perfect from start to finish. So that's my list. This video should show you that Sasuke is a deep, dynamic character. Part of what makes him great is when he's doing bad things. It's boring when someone is always doing the right thing or just being perfect. His imperfection is his perfection. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos in the future. Comment something if you have something to say. And thank y'all for watching, and I guess I'll see y'all next time.